Klaus plant instrumentation. We'll start with the tail gas analyzer and the air demand analyzer. Then we'll talk about combustion air control. Then we'll get into some temperature measurement, like thermocouples. And then we'll focus on the reaction furnace itself and what we need for that instrumentation. So we'll start with probably the most important piece of instrumentation in the SRU, the tail gas analyzer, also called the air demand analyzer. And what it does is measures the H2S and SO2 content in the tail gas stream. And it does that with ultraviolet spectroscopy. Certain tail gas analyzers can also measure the COS and CS2 concentrations in the tail gas. And so remember, although we're attempting to maintain an H2S to SO2 ratio of 2 to 1, we can't use that ratio for the combustion air control algorithm because that ratio is exponential, it's nonlinear. So for our air demand, we need to use that formula at the bottom. It's for our air demand signal, and that's a linear formula where you can plug in your ratio and get your signal. And remember, the 0.0, .0 corresponds to a perfect 2 to 1 ratio. Now we'll get into combustion air control. This utilizes the feed stream ratio controller, which includes a large butterfly valve. With an increase in acid gas flow rate, there will be an increase in main air flow. And then the trim air is used for the fine tuning of combustion air control. It eliminates the losses in recovery efficiency due to off ratio operations. And it's absolutely necessary for optimal operation of the SRU. And that trim air is sized so that its max flow rate is 10% of the max main air flow rate. So just little fine tuning, 10% is all it's doing. And this slide shows why we want upstream amine and SWS units to remove as much of the hydrocarbons as possible. So where H2S would only need half a mole of O2 for complete oxidation, if we look at methane, CH4, it needs two moles, which is four times as much as H2S. Then looking at propane, it needs ten times as much oxygen. And this is why we want to keep the hydrocarbon content down. That will minimize our extra air needed and keep our combustion air control steady. Now we'll talk about some temperature measurement. In the SRU, we want some sort of temperature indicator after every change in temperature. So that includes after the RF, after each condenser, after each reheater, and within the converters. We talked about those temperature profiles in the converters, how they're used to assess catalyst activity. So if the maximum converter temp is at the top, then the catalyst is still fully active at that top layer. And now one more slide on the reaction furnace. So in the RF, we can't have a regular thermal well or thermocouple because it's too hot. So we either need a ceramic protected thermal well or an optical pyrometer, or ideally we want both of those. So the thermocouple is good for startups and shutdowns, but it's not good for observing sudden temperature changes. The optical pyrometer is good for changing temperatures, like when co-firing and trying to achieve the perfect temperature. But it's not, it will not read temperatures lower than 600 degrees Celsius typically. So it has that high, that low limit. The most common optical parameter is the E squared T. And like all measurement instruments, it's important that these are regularly calibrated and maintained. So that brings us to the end of the webinar. Thank you all for attending. And if you liked this presentation, consider looking into our on-site training where we can send one engineer to your location and provide a wide range of courses regarding SRUs or amine sweetening units.